This project, rather than attempting to design intelligence itself, seeks to design the conditions under which intelligence might emerge. The work that we are about to show you finds its place within a genre of playful and scientific experiments, which unlike previous artificial life simulations that attempt to induce evolution within the machines, here asks whether human beings can be epistemologically trained to do cognition at novel scales through emergent forms of coordination. In our project, players work together to complete arbitrary yet increasingly complex tasks as a method for training humans how to activate our species' latent and untapped potential for thinking as a swarm intelligence. A key reference for us is the 1991 cybernetic experiment of Lauren Carpenter, who would go on to co-found Pixar. In the experiment, Carpenter divided an auditorium, not unlike this one, filled with hundreds of people into two groups, each of which collectively controlled one of the opposing paddles in the early computer game Pong. They did so by holding up either the green or red side of their individually provided sensor. If at any time within the experiment, two penny people revealed one side of the colors, the paddle would move too fast to one side and miss the ball. For reasons yet unknown, Carpenter's famous quote, we don't know what that was, a balanced coordination emerged as each group found a way to hold up the right admixture of red and green and to effectively control the panel such that both sides were able to play the game. In the decades that followed, there were a number of uh, kind of ensuing experiments that follow these lines, um, but that were propped up by the emergence of the internet and streaming platforms. One famous example from uh, 2014 was a game called Twitch Plays Pokemon, where thousands of people watched a single broadcast of Pokemon, and um, anyone participating in the chat, you can see that on the right here, could type through the chat window, up, down, left, right, uh, or other controls of the game. And through the hundreds of thousands of people that were playing all together, over the course of about two weeks, they completed the game as a whole through a kind of collective coordination exercise. Another experiment uh, along these lines that's uh, inspiring to us is Reddit's r slash place, an experiment where essentially um, users are given a blank picture, a black, blank image, and anyone uh, is able to select an individual pixel in that image and set its color. Um, and over time, Reddit's hundreds of uh, communities uh, gather together and coordinated about which, which images or which pixels they would each set the color of. And there is this kind of ensuing battle that emerged over these pixels um, where you see this kind of emergent order that, that unfolds. So we're continuing this approach of playfully experimenting with mass coordination. Our new offering is to focus on the latent intelligence, the latent swarm intelligence within humans. Specifically, how games activate this in ways that are at scales beyond previous interaction paradigms. The swarm intelligence that we refer to here is a focus on collective abilities within self-organizing systems that emerge through the iterative interactions of the constituent parts. Swarm intelligence, fundamentally from the reading we've done, must be distributed, emergent, and situational. Our hypothesis is that swarm intelligence within humans is a new interaction paradigm with AI. It's beyond the sort of increasing individuated and pacified chat inter interfaces that dominate today. If the input to AI is already a collection of human intelligence, how then can the interface become one of collectivity? We seek to find out in this project, Interplay. So over the last two weeks, we've been prototyping Interplay. And how it essentially works is we have a grid. Um, you play it on this world that is a grid. And on that grid, different creatures move around it. There are yellow blobs, who are sort of the heroes of this world, whom you're trying to help reach this rainbow bucket. And there are red creatures, which are antagonists, which you're trying to help, uh, which you're trying to not let eat 
the yellow blobs. However, unlike traditional games, you would expect to be playing as those characters. In Interplay, instead, you play as the environment. So there are two aspects of the environments you can control. One is the grid, so you can type in the Twitch chat and move lower or raise the grid uh, tiles so that you control the characters. And you can also control the wind. To control the wind, you have to type words in the chat and you will get a vector which is in relation with the central word, uh, in this case, factory. And the relationship with the words you type might appear semantic, but in reality, they are the words and how they are embedded in the latent space of a large language model. So you have to figure out which is the right word in order to get the perfect magnitude and the perfect direction for the wind in order to help the protagonists. The wind in this case goes every 30 seconds, so you have to figure out these words and make use of it because when you have a very large grid, you have to use it in order to move further. Coming back to uh, these blobby creatures, they have pretty basic uh, logic inside of them. Uh, so uh, red blobs just randomly roam around the environment and uh, yellow blob uh, have very basic sensing system uh, to avoid uh, enemies in front of, in front of them. Um, during, the, uh, during our playtest, uh, we found out several um, communal behavior uh, uh, people come up with. Uh, for example, they, they build bridges to navigate a uh, yellow blob to the rainbow bucket, or they can create uh, walls uh, to, to cover uh, yellow blobs from bad blobs. Um, and uh, Wind may be tricky, it may be your ally or um, may work against you if uh, you didn't uh, harness its power. So we, we tested out this game uh, in the media lab with different sized groups. We did a bunch of tests with the five of us, we did some with about 10 people and we've done others with about 40. And in, in observing these experiments, um, we've designed the game such that not a, you can't play with a single person. It, it necessitates the coordination and organization of many people simultaneously. And this is both because there's just simply too many things to, that are going on simultaneously. There's, the game begins with many yellow creatures and many red creatures. Um, furthermore, the, the, any input in the game, moving the tiles up or down, is only temporary. The tiles reset quite regularly. And throughout this, we see the kind of different kinds of player behaviors and coordinations emerge. For example, we see kind of archetypes of people thinking two steps ahead and moving tiles in advance, whereas others are kind of focused purely on the present moment. Um, sometimes we see people purely focusing on the wind to push antagonists out of the way, whereas other times we're kind of pushing, I think we'll see it in a moment here, pushing the yellow blob towards a more desirable location like that. Other, other strategies that emerge are trying to kind of push different creatures all together in order to trap them, which we'll see in a moment here, like that. Um, and so these behaviors are kind of nonverbal. They're, they're things that people sort of do as a collective and uh, kind of organize coherently, coherent actions all together. So what we found as a result of our experiment was that humans can very well be trained and induced to think as a swarm. That was our coordination over the grid, our task decomposition into multiple different self-organized activities. But when we brought in the feature of the wind, what we found is that that swarm intelligence could be applied to language. Not language in the way that we understand it, as Miriam said, but language as the AI understands it. So, one of the principles of our game is that we are teaching humans how to think and how to communicate a bit like AI. The larger goal of this point is that we, through interplay, seek to usher in a new human AI communica communication paradigm that does not only submit AI to the demands of single human communication, namely RLHF, but opens up the manifold of what it means to be a human and to communicate with AI such that what artificial intelligence says might finally become intelligible. 
we see this game as part of a new genre in these playful experiments of mass coordination, but also AI interaction. These are experiments that don't, get for, don't take for granted who the players are or what they may be, but instead looks at the emergent capabilities of swarm intelligence. Thank you so much for listening. Uh, we're going to be performing a series of large-scale uh, collective playtests in the near future, so if you'd like to join us for that, please follow this link, and we'll see you in the grid. Thank you.